Hey, it's Rob, aka The Author Creative, and today I'm going to be talking about these things. Cassette tapes, in case you didn't know what they are. So, unless you've been living in a nuclear bunker for the last few years, and frankly, who could blame you? You've probably noticed that cassettes have seen something of a resurgence recently. In fact, sales of cassette albums have doubled every year since 2015, and that's just pre-recorded cassettes. Blank tapes like these are pretty much always old stock, and prices for them have been rising sharply in recent years, which indicates that there is just more demand for them now than there was a few years back. So why would anybody choose to buy an outdated analog format over a much more versatile digital alternative? After all, the digital version is measurably better in almost every single way. It's higher resolution, there's no hiss, it doesn't degrade over time, and it's more convenient. Well, what's happening is the same thing that happened to vinyl a few years back. The nostalgia factor. People who grew up with cassettes, like myself, are now at the age where they start to look back fondly at the good old days of their youth, and they start to reminisce about how wonderful things were when they were young. And now they have a bit of spare cash that they can spend on indulging their nostalgia. This has caused a bit of a pop culture feedback loop, and we're now starting to see cassettes being incorporated into movies and TV shows, and this just only serves to feed the hype further. We've also recently seen a number of YouTube channels, such as Techmoan and Cassette Comeback, uh, who are actually getting into cassettes and showing how good they really can be. So, is it worth getting into cassettes now? I mean, can they really offer anything that other formats can't? Well, I would argue that yes, they totally can. Like vinyl, tape is analog, which means that it's a fully immersive, tactile experience. So, when you get a cassette, you have to take it out of its case, slide it into a cassette deck, hit a nice big chunky play button, and then you can sit and watch as the tape advances from one reel to the other. Now compare that to playing an mp3. Get out your phone, search through a list of songs, tap play. Now tell me which one is cooler. Now vinyl offers this experience too, and with vinyl you can skip between tracks, which, let's face it, is a bit of a ball ache on a cassette. But cassettes have three big advantages over vinyl. Number one, they're portable. Buy yourself a Walkman and you can listen to cassettes as easily and conveniently as you listen to songs on your phone. A lot of modern Walkmans are actually not much bigger than a single cassette case, so they're pretty easy to carry around. They're also pretty hardy, which means that you can use them in your car or when running without risk of damaging them. Number two, they're cheap. Okay, so prices have been going up recently, but tape is still way cheaper than vinyl, and so are cassette players. This means you don't have to worry so much about damaging your precious purchases, and you can actually just get out there and enjoy them. And number three, and this is the big one, you can record on cassettes. This is arguably the most appealing thing about them. Making your own custom mixes is way more fun than just sticking mp3s in a playlist. And if you're into making your own music, tape is a great way to just quickly jot down ideas without having to bounce things down and save your audio to your device, etc. But what about audio quality? Isn't tape just completely rubbish when compared to vinyl or digital media? Well, yes, it can be, but it depends on three factors. Number one, the quality of the recording. Number two, the quality of the tape you're recording onto. And number three, the quality of the machine you play it back on, in that order. Most people grew up with tape machines like this, or like this, and neither of these are going to sound amazing or make good recordings. And if you also use cheap tape, then of course you have a recipe for mediocre sounding audio soup. Fans of vinyl will tell you that a record can sound as good as, if not better than, a CD. And technically, yes, this is possible, but only if you have an absolutely pristine record played on an excellent quality turntable with a flawless stylus and coupled to a really decent amplifier. Unless you have all of those factors, I can tell you categorically that a vinyl will not sound as good as a CD, not by a long shot. And cassettes are much the same. If you listen to a well-recorded, high-quality cassette on a good deck, you would find it extremely difficult to tell the difference between that and a digital recording. 
and arguably it's much easier to get that kind of quality out of a tape than it is out of a record. So today I'm going to be putting some different cassettes through their paces and I'm going to try to see just how much of a difference there actually is between tapes and a digital recording. So here I have a selection of different tapes. These fall into a few broad categories. We have some type one ferret cassettes, which are essentially just your bog standard run of the mill tapes. Then we have uh, some chrome tape, um, which is kind of like the next level up. And then lastly, we have a metal tape, which is like the Rolls Royce of cassettes, and it has a price tag to match. And to test them, we'll be using my Yamaha KX580SE cassette deck. It dates from the mid 90s and it sounds pretty decent. There are more expensive decks out there, of course, such as the legendary Nakamichi Dragon, but this deck had excellent reviews in its day and I certainly cannot fault it myself. It's a two head deck, not a three head deck, which means that you can't monitor the audio as it's being recorded to the tape. Um, but it does have bias adjustment and tape calibration, which means that you can tune it to each different type of tape to get the best out of them. So this is a good kind of middle of the range deck and it's, it's a good way to show just how good tapes can be without spending huge money. Okay, so this is the setup we're gonna be using. We have the tape deck uh, located rather inconveniently under the desk here. And that's connected to the studio sound card via this patch panel. And then to monitor the sound from the tape deck, we have this jack plugged into the headphone socket and that goes directly into this wave recorder here. So we'll be recording the audio directly out of the tape deck with no processing at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play an uncompressed wave file from the computer and record that directly into the tape deck um, using these different types of tapes and then we're going to monitor we're going to take the we're going to record the output from the tape deck so we're going to record the monitor first and then we'll record the output from the actual tape and store them on the wave recorder and then we'll import them into logic and we can set them up side by side to see how they sound okay so the sample audio we're going to be using is from a track which i'm currently working on it's kind of like an electronica breaks kind of track um, the reason i've chosen it is because it has quite a lot of low and high frequency audio in it so it should be a good one to test how much can be captured on the tape um, what i've done is i've spliced three different parts of the song together so we have a range of different uh, audio to test with and I'm sending the audio from this to the secondary outputs of the sound card, which is then going into the tape deck down here. Right, so before we get stuck in, a few disclaimers. Firstly, I only have one of each type of tape that we're gonna be testing. So I don't know for sure that it's gonna be performing at its best. Um, all of the tapes that we'll be using today are new old stock, apart from the Recording the Masters, which is the only actual new one. So, of course, we don't know how well they've been stored, how well they've been cared for. Some of them are nearly 30 years old now. So, yeah, we've just got to bear that in mind. Secondly, the test is not going to be completely objective because I'm going to be using my ears to compare the recordings. Now, admittedly, I do have pretty good ears, but I'm also a human being and therefore I am susceptible to error. Um, and also, the other thing is that I'd, I'm going to know which recording comes from which tape. So this opens up the possibility of me being psychologically biased towards certain tapes that I think should sound good. But I don't think this is gonna really be a problem because firstly, I'm not an expert on tapes by any means. And also there are so many different factors which could affect which tapes sound the best, you know, how they've been stored, how they've been treated. Um, so I actually don't have any expectations over which ones are gonna sound the best. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through and record the music sample onto each one of the tapes. First, I'm calibrating the tape and then doing a couple of short test runs to get the record level and bias adjustment to the optimum amounts. Then I record the music sample, in each case capturing the source and the tape recording, and then I'm importing these into Logic and aligning them, and lastly, applying a little bit of gain adjustment to each clip so that all of the recordings peak at the same level. Okay, so I've gone through and recorded on a bunch of different cassettes. Um, originally, I was just going to do about four or five, but I ended up getting a bit carried away and I've actually done nine of them now. 
Um, I'm not going to go through all of them in this video. Um, instead, I'm going to just focus on a few key ones. But if you're interested in hearing all the demos, I'm going to put a link to the original sound files in the description below. Um, so if you want to, you can go and check them out for yourself. First up, some Type 1s. These are normal bias cassettes and they were the most common. Um, many budget cassette recorders, car stereos, Walkmans, etc. were actually set up to just use this kind of tape. Um, their characteristics tend to be strong bass but uh, less high frequency response. Um, they also tend to have more hiss than Type 2 or Type 4 cassettes. First in line, we have a TDK D cassette. Um, this is pretty much regarded as the standard Type 1 audio cassette. Many tape decks, uh, particularly Japanese ones, uh, are calibrated to these by default. Um, this particular one dates from the early 90s, so it should be in fairly decent condition. Right, so for each of these tests, I've got the source along the top and then the tape recording on the bottom. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just switch between them using the solo. Um, so whichever one is in blue is the one that we're listening to currently. Right, let's take a listen to the TDKD. Let's start with the source. And now the tape. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty decent to me. Um, this is a, just a bog standard, run of the mill ferret cassette, nothing special at all. Um, and I mean, if I was just listening to that, I think I would find it quite difficult to tell which one is uh, the digital and which one isn't. Obviously, there's a bit of hiss, which you can hear at the beginning there. the source the hi-hats are ever so slightly sharper um, th on the tape they seem to have saturated a little bit into the tape um, which may be uh, because I perhaps recorded it a bit too hot perhaps it would have been better if I just turned it down a slight bit so we could bear that in mind um, but the bass sounds really punchy really full mid-range sounds nice and clear and even even the highs sound clear, um, just not quite as crisp as the digital recording. This is the tape. Oh, I think you'll agree that sounds pretty damn good. So, so much for tape sounding mediocre, right? Okay, next up we have a TDK AR. This one dates from the mid 90s. This is also a type one, but it's a much more premium one. There was actually also an ARX, which is even more premium, but this is a good representation of a high end type one cassette. So let's start with the tape. So again, very clear, very crisp. I think if you didn't know it was a tape, you'd probably struggle to tell. Um, 
slightly crisper than the D, but not much actually. There's not a hell of a lot in it, uh, if I'm honest. There's still a little bit of a roll off on the high end um, compared to the digital recording. And that is just a characteristic of, of a ferric tape, really. One thing I'm noticing is that the hiss was slightly less on the AR. And um, what we're going to do just now is I'm going to compare them all side by side and we can actually listen to the different levels of hiss and the different characteristics of each tape um, individually. But yeah, sounding pretty tight. Next up, the Recording the Masters Fox C60. Now, at the time of making this video, this is one of the only genuinely new cassettes that you can buy, um, apart from some pretty terrible Chinese hacks. Uh, it's made in France, and it's based on the SM900 formula that they make, which is actually for um, studio tape machines. Uh, so it'll be interesting to compare this to some of the other Type 1 tapes, which are all new old stock and have been stored for many years. Let's start with the tape and take a listen. Immediately noticing more hiss, actually. So you, you can really hear the hiss, but the high end on this is crisper than those TDK tapes. But the hiss is higher, and you can actually hear the hiss even during the music. Like there, you can definitely hear the hiss. Very impressive high end on this, I have to say. It sounds very crisp. I would say that sounds as crisp, like crisper than any of the other ferric tapes that we've listened to so far. Um, just a pity about that high level of hiss, really. Um, I guess if you were to crop that, um, you wouldn't really notice the hiss because obviously behind the music it kind of just blends in. But um, like if I go to this end part of the track where it fades out. You can really hear that hiss pushing through there. Um, but otherwise, very impressive tape, I have to say. Now, let's move on to some Type 2 or high position cassettes. Uh, these require a higher bias level when recording because the particles are harder to magnetize than Type 1 ferret cassettes. Because of this, they don't record well uh, unless the deck has a specific high position or uh, chrome setting. First up, we have a TDK SA. Uh, like the D, the TDK SA is kind of regarded as the standard for Type 2 cassettes. Um, this one dates from the late 80s, so it's a little bit older than some of the other tapes we've been testing. But a lot of people in the tape world consider this to be one of the best editions of the SA. Let's take a listen. Tiny bit of a drop out there. This recording is sounding just a tiny bit crisper, I think. I think if I was to record this again, I would add a little bit more negative bias just to pull in a little bit more high end. But it sounds very sharp and noticeably less hiss than the ferric tapes as well.
Very nice dynamics on this. I would say this is probably the best that I've heard out of the test so far. Let's just to listen to the digital version of that quickly. I mean, they're virtually imperceptible. I mean, if you scrambled those around and I couldn't hear the hiss at the beginning, I don't think I would be able to tell you which is which, quite honestly. That is very nice, very nice indeed. Right, next we have a BASF Chrome Maxima 2. Very nice looking tape, this. This is also a type 2, but unlike the later formulations, uh, this tape actually contains pure chromium oxide. Um, and you can actually tell because the tape has a very characteristic wax crayon smell to it. Now, this was the original formulation for type 2 cassettes, and it was developed by uh, DuPont and BASF in the early 70s, and they then licensed it to other manufacturers. But because the licensing fees were expensive, manufacturers like Sony and TDK decided to come up with their own formulations for type 2 rather than pay the expensive licensing fees. So these early chrome tapes actually have very different characteristics to the later type 2s, which are normally cobalt absorbed iron oxide. And since most modern decks are actually calibrated to the later type 2 formulations, often these pure chrome tapes don't perform very well on newer machines. So in my case, I did actually manage to get quite a good recording out of this, but um, the levels were way down. So I actually had to boost the gain by quite a considerable amount here. Um, so that the levels match that of the source. So it just shows you do need a really good tape deck to make the most of these tapes. And sadly, my middle of the range Yamaha is not quite up to the task. Anyway, let's take a listen. Noticing a bit of distortion. The highs are a bit flattened as well. So yeah, not the best result for that. Um, however, if you have a look at uh, a YouTube channel that I follow called Cassette Comeback, um, Tony managed to get a really good recording out of one of these tapes on uh, one of his videos. Um, so it just shows that if you have the right deck that can actually do the right kind of calibration, these tapes can sound fantastic and uh, you know the levels can actually be really solid. So I'm not gonna pass judgment on this particular tape because quite frankly, it's the deck that's the problem, not the tape. Finally, we have a Type 4 or metal cassette. Uh, I actually only have one of these. This is a Sony Metal XR um, because they are pretty pricey. In fact, uh, prices for the most highly regarded tapes can often reach into three figures, which is pretty ridiculous. This is actually a more run-of-the-mill Type 4, but it should still sound pretty decent. Um, these tapes use metal particles instead of oxides, um, which means that they have a really good frequency response across the whole spectrum but they are very expensive to produce, or were very expensive to produce. I don't think any are made anymore. Um, and they also cause more wear on the heads of a tape deck because the tape particles are harder. Right, the creme de la creme, the metal tape. Let's take a listen. Nice crisp highs on that. Actually, very little difference on the high end at all, in fact. Uh, this is the closest, I think, that I've heard to the actual digital recording when it comes to the really crisp hi-hat on this track. Uh, it sounds very good indeed.
nice presence on the bass as well. I mean, this part of the track, I can't hear the difference. Those sound identical to me. Just listen to the amount of detail in that really little soft breakdown bit here. Oh, that is crystal clear, crystal clear. You can see why these tapes are so expensive and so well revered because that, I mean, that is as close to a digital recording as you can possibly hope to get with a tape. Uh, and that, remember, is with a very mediocre middle of the range cassette deck and a very mediocre middle of the range metal tape. So. Just imagine what the best of the best would sound like. But, I mean, that sounds really fantastic. Kiss is very low as well. Okay, so now what I've done is put all of the tape recordings in line with each other. Um, so what we can do now is we can flick between all of the different tapes and listen to their various characteristics. So let's just take a listen to the source first, just to remind ourselves of how that sounds. Okay, let's take a listen to the TDKD. And you immediately hear the highs are a little flat. The AR. Interestingly, the D has better bass. But the A the AR is more measured, I would say. The D has more low end presence though. Take the Fox. Very nice detail on the Fox. That Fox sounds really nice. When you can't hear the hiss, it sounds wonderful. Okay, let's take a listen to some of the chromes then. So, the SA. Let's compare the SA with the Fox. Not a lot in that at all. I would say the Fox actually has slightly more presence. Which would make sense because the Fox is a ferric and the SA is a chrome and chrome tapes ha tend to have less kind of bass and bass mids. So it would make sense that the Fox has more punch in the low end. Um, the TDK has a very slight edge on the highs, but I mean, it's almost imperceptible. So the Fox. And the SA. Slightly quieter, quite a lot quieter actually. But the highs, highs are there on the Fox. Very nice tape, I have to say, very impressed with that. Uh, okay, so let's compare the SA now with the metal.
you can definitely hear how the metal tape responds better to bass than the chrome does. And the highs are pretty much pretty much the same. The SA has very good high end. The metal just sounds slightly tidier. Um, I think what's happening is with the uh, the chromes and the ferret cassettes, you get a little bit of bleed when you have the hi hat pushing in and the hi-hat is very short and sharp in this track um, and what tends to happen with the ferrex and the chromes I think is that it bleeds a little bit on either side so you get a bit of a smearing effect on the hi-hat. Very imperceptible but it is there. The metal doesn't really suffer from that I think because the particles are I don't know just the way the particles are I guess you don't get that smearing effect um, like you get with the other tapes so it just sounds a bit tidier a bit neater a bit more digital in sound. Listen to how precise that hi hat is. You listen closely. That's the SA. Let's go to a bit where there's a. Listen carefully to that hi hat. Now the metal. Pin sharp. Pin sharp. Not quite a shot. You can also hear it in that bit as well. So if we listen to the SA, listen carefully to that little um, kind of roll thing. You can hear it bleeding ever so slightly. It's almost like a little bit of distortion. Now listen to the metal tape. Virtually no distortion at all on that. Very precise, super, super precise. Very nice indeed. Right, so there's one more little thing I wanna try and that is listening to all of the hiss from the various different types of tape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank the volume right up. So. First of all, the source. Actually, let's just make this a little shorter. All right, so there's no sound there at all. Let's take a listen to the D. Another AR. Much the same. The Fox. Wow. That is quite a lot of hiss going on on the Fox, I have to say. Very noisy tape. Let's listen to the fox and the D. It's the D, that's the fox. Wow. So now let's listen to a good ferric compared to a chrome. So this is the AR and then the SA. It's the AR. SA is quite a lot quieter. AR, SA. Now let's listen to the SA compared to the metal. So this is the SA and now the metal. Interesting. The metal is actually noisier. I didn't expect that. Now bear in mind that this is not completely objective because what I have done here is I've adjusted the gain um, for each of these recordings so that they peak at the same level. So this is not the hiss as you would hear it on the tape, but bear in mind that when I recorded these tapes, I have got the levels as high as I can go without them distorting. So basically these tapes are recorded as loudly as they possibly could be. Um, so this, I think it's a pretty fair test because, you know, where you have to crank the volume up because the tape's recorded softly, then obviously the hiss is gonna go up as well. So there you go. I think that proves that with a good tape and a good recorder, you would find it 
pretty difficult to tell the difference between a cassette and a digital recording. Yeah, there is a bit of hiss, but as far as I'm concerned, that just adds a bit of analog magic to what would otherwise just be a sterile listening experience. So what do you think? Should cassettes just be consigned to the bin of yesteryear, or is there actually something in the experience of enjoying your music on an analog format in a more novel way than just on an mp3? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. I know it's a cliche, but it really does help with the gods of the YouTube algorithm. And if you enjoy messing around with bits of music tech and other music related stuff, hit subscribe because there will be plenty more like this coming along pretty soon. Ciao, ciao.